Okay, good afternoon everybody and welcome to today's webinar, Creating Landing Pages at Sell. My name is Craig Stouffer with Pinpoint and I'm joined today by our special guest presenter and well-known internet strategist, Bob Bly. 20 second introduction uh, to Pinpoint. Pinpoint is business class email marketing. There are about 6,000 companies using Pinpoint and the Pinpoint platform. Most of them are mid-sized businesses. We have both B2B or business to business as well as business to consumer type customers. Uh, Pinpoint's a great platform for those that uh, want to drive traffic to the landing pages using using Pinpoint for email marketing uh, and uh, and test with the with the stuff that you're going to learn today. And now I'm going to introduce you to Bob Lai. Bob is a well-known internet strategist, as I mentioned, copywriter, and in my opinion, great, excellent teacher. We've done several of these events together. We always get fantastic feedback from folks. He's a prolific author of over 75 books. He's appeared on TV and radio. And he has clients ranging from AT&T, IBM, and so forth. And he's helped many customers with their email marketing, direct marketing, and copywriting. I'll turn the presentation over to Bob. Bob, thank you for joining us. I'm going to hand over the uh, controls at this point. So the landing page is a page on the web that is designed for conversion. You drive traffic to it using several different methods, a number of methods, and they can range from Facebook advertising and Google AdWords, pay-per-click advertising, to email marketing and social media. You drive the traffic to not to your home page, but to the specific landing page where you want to convert the traffic coming in to leads or prospects or subscribers or customers. That's the only purpose of the landing page, conversion. So there's two elements in internet marketing if you want to simplify it and break it down to its basic component. There's traffic, as we talked about, and then there's conversion, which is the job of the landing page. Now, how well will your landing page convert? And by convert, we mean get the, the maximum people who come to the landing page to accept the action or order, the action or uh, that you want them to do, whether it's to order a product, or to download a white paper, or to sign up for a webinar like this one. The formula here gives a little idea of what the factors are in putting together a landing page. And C equals conversion. So C equals 4M plus 3B plus 2 times I minus F minus 2 times A. So it sounds like gibberish, but it's not. What does all this mean? Well, the conversion rate is based on five factors. First, it's based on prospect motivation, which is the most important factor because we give it a four. Prospect motivation is how much of a motive or incentive does the prospect have to do what you're asking them to do. So, for example, uh, I'll take an absurd example. If you're giving away a Kia to everyone who registers on your landing page and gives them information, then you're going to have huge motivation, and you're going to have an out of this, you know, an out of this world conversion rate. On the other hand, if your uh, offer is, uh, you know, a free white paper and you don't say what the topic is, you just and I've had that happen. I've gotten emails that say free white paper in the subject line. Well, who cares? So that's very weak motivation for the prospect. So the first factor is how, what incentive, how interested will the prospect be in the offer you're presenting. That's the main factor that determines the conversion rate. Secondary to that is V, value proposition. And that's why we give it a 3, 3V. Three and that means how clear is it, how clear is it what value your offer or your product will deliver to the prospect. In other words, using our absurd example again, obviously people would want a Kia, but what is the value of a Kia? Is it save money on gas? Is it a, a great second car? What is the value proposition of the product or the offer? The fourth, uh, the, the next uh, variables are I minus F multiplied by two. I is the incentive to take action. For example, is, it, is this offer good for this week only? Uh, is it, you know, if it's financial, is there some way that it ties in with the April 15th tax deadline? What is the incentive to act now instead of later? And from that, we subtract the friction, which means 
what difficulty is there for the prospect to take this to take this offer? Uh, a great example of, of friction is these landing pages. I'm sure we've all seen them. These landing pages where uh, you start filling in your name and address, and then you go. It goes on and on, and you realize it's a 29 qu question uh, form or a, you know a, a, a long questionnaire, and that creates friction and the prospect doesn't want to do it, so it's a negative factor. And the last factor, which is also negative, A minus 2A, is anxiety. Is the prospect nervous? Uh, are they afraid that if they register on your landing page, they're going to be bombarded by spam, or that they're going to, their credit card will be abused, or they'll be giving up their, their uh, personal identity? So with that, that will take, you know, the higher the anxiety, the less conversion rate you'll have, the lower it will be. Next slide, please. What are the important areas of a landing page? There are several hot spots that, excuse me, there's several hot spots uh, that are more, where the copy and the image is more, or the graphics are more important than the rest of the page. And when you're testing landing pages, these are the variables that are worth testing, you know, not some minor thing whether we begin the word uh, the with a lowercase t or an uppercase t, not some trivial thing, but these are the things that will make a difference. The first of the hotspots is the banner. What comes above the headline? Because that sort of the, the, adds a credibility factor. Who are you? And here it's the professional bookkeeper. You see that seal in the upper left corner, and it has a a, a very uh, credible appearance. So the first is the banner. The second is the headline copy. The headline is probably the most important part of the landing page. And the headline gets attention. That's all it does. Here it says, earn the money you deserve. The subhead explains what the page is about. And here this, it says the page is about getting a free DVD that shows how to make more money in their job as an accountant. So the subhead draws them into the, the page, draws them into the body copy. Then underneath the subhead is the body copy that explains the benefits and the offer further. At the end is the close where you ask for action. There is, all, there is usually, not always, but there is often an image. And here we see a, a picture of the free CD, uh, the free uh, DVD that you get when you respond to this uh, landing page. And then it also matters where you place the form. And here the form is on the bottom right corner. And it, it's difficult to get an authoritative read on this because you'll hear people uh, say, always put the form on the right-hand side of the page. But I was talking with a firm that I did some uh, landing page copy for, and they tested it for them. The left-hand the left -hand side did better. So I guess the lesson there is you have to test these elements for yourself and see what works best for you. Next page, please. The image is important. The picture can make a difference in the response rates. So take a look at this. Three sensible images to illustrate this landing page. One, as we saw, the picture of the DVD, the free freebie that you get when you respond. Number two, a picture of a smart, successful woman, presumably a smart, successful female accountant. This is for accountant. And number three is a happy couple, at least one of whom must be an accountant. So the winner was the picture of the smart, successful woman. Would you be able to know that in advance? No. All three of the images make sense. They're logical. But you don't know which one is going to win until you test. And landing pages lend themselves very well, really better than print direct mail, lend themselves to testing. Because you can test rapidly, and you can do what's called multivariate or multiple variable testing where you test more than one variable in the landing page at once. If you don't want to get that elaborate and you 
feel you want to keep the thing simple, a lot of software available that's easy to use that will do at least ABC split tests. For example, like an ABC split of these images, which was done here, and you see the results. Next page, please. So here's a, uh, another a tip for landing pages. Video is becoming very popular on the internet today. And if you're not using video on your landing pages, you may be leaving money on the table. So definitely one of the things you would want to test is take one of your landing pages, do an A-B split, and put video on one of the landing pages. Here's a landing page for a course on selling, sales course, that I publish called the New Zero Pressure Selling. And there is a video of someone, actually happens to be me, presenting one of the techniques that is taught in the course. A lot of times these videos are more uh, introductions to the landing page or to the or talk of the, or they talk about the publisher or the manufacturer or the company. But I like to actually give away free content in my videos. So the person who visits the landing page has learned something valuable even if they don't buy the product. A very good technique. It's like sampling. You know, you go to the mall and go to the food court, and who's getting the most business? The uh, Chick-fil-A place that is giving away little pieces of chicken with toothpicks in it versus the other places that give no samples. Next slide, please. One of the things you want to look out for and be sure that is uh, that it's present is online or keyword connectivity. In other words, the keywords that you bid on for Google AdWords, let's say. Let's talk about that as a, as, a, as a medium. The keywords you bid on for Google AdWords to drive traffic to your landing pages should show up in the actual Google Ads that you write. The actual Google Ads, the words in that ad, should show up on your landing pages. So there is continuity. It's what people expect and are looking for. So you can see that uh, the matching of the, of the words increases response. For example, we had uh, one uh, keyword that is IT training. Next to it, this is on the top, the top row, next to it we have IT career. So for those keywords, we, had, we, we ran a, uh, an ad that said free IT training. And for the keyword IT career, it did a 2.7% uh, click-through rate. But for IT training, it did a 4.7%, which is 170% lift. Why? Because the keyword IT training is in the ad headline, IT training. So this uh, principle, and that it works uh, fr to the, from the keyword to the ad, or the, the tra source of traffic, but also from the source of traffic to the landing page. The landing page should reflect the marketing that brought the traffic there. And next page, please. And Bob, I'm going to jump in real quick and clarify for some folks that are asking the question, and how do we know, for example, it was just the image you know, that made the difference? And in all of these cases, but in virtually any case, many landing page tools will allow you to do multivariant testing where you'll change only one item. So if you have two identical landing pages and the only thing that you change you know, is, uh, is the image and you send the same campaign over the same time frame and so forth, the only variable that you control that you're changing is the image. So as you go through and compares a lot of the you know, one versus the other, that's typically how that's done. So that's what's question. done. In other words, you don't even need a multivariate testing tool, just an A-B split tool, which is very basic. You can test two different images, and if you leave everything else identical, including the date that you run the test, then you know the difference is due to the only change that was made, which in that case was the image. So one issue that comes up is uh, length of landing page. Some people do them. Uh, so that they're very brief and short, that's redundant. So they're very brief, and other people have very detailed, long copy landing pages. And how do you determine the right length for your landing page? Well, keep in mind that the copy that is used to, to communicate your offer or sell a product is contained in two elements, not just the landing page. It's contained in the email that brings you to the landing page or the ad, and it is contained in the landing page itself. So here's the logic that a lot of marketers use, and it's shown in that, four, that box with four quadrants. If 
and starting at the upper left quadrant that's blue, if you're using a short email without a lot of uh, detail and you use a transaction page, which is a term for a short landing page, you, that'll work if it's an offer or a copy, uh, I'm sorry, an offer or a product that doesn't need a lot of copy to sell it. This would be perfect, for example, giving away a free white paper. It doesn't take a lot of copy to convince someone to take a free white paper. It's not an action with a lot of consequence. There's no money changing hands. So that, so that would work for giving away a free offer. If we go to the right, the yellow quadrant, it says short email and long copy landing page. So if, you, if you're selling a product, let's say a, uh, uh, an informational newsletter, that is a subscription, paid subscription newsletter, and you need long copy to sell it. Normally in direct mail you use a four-page letter. Now you're translating it to the web. If you use a short email, you don't have enough copy in that to make the sale. So you're going to need to have you're going to need to have a uh, my slide just I don't know what the problems are, but they slide just uh, disappeared again. So. Uh, if Craig, if you're hearing me and can fix that, good. If not, I have a hard copy in front of me. Uh, so okay. uh, the short email, if you do that, it doesn't have enough information to, to close the deal, so you need a longer copy in the landing page. Below that, in the quadrant in the bottom right, you see it says a long email and landing page. This is for products that require a super amount of copy. Again, maybe a, a business opportunity uh, course that you're selling or a success course, a Tony Robbins type course. And you could have a lot of copy in the email and then continue that on the landing page. And then in the bottom left, you might say instead of having a long email, I'm going to send a three, I'm gonna have, instead of having a short email, I'm going to send a long email, three page email that'll do all the selling and then I only need a short landing page to close the deal. So those are some of the options available to you. So one of the principles that works well in landing pages in particular, but in direct marketing in general, is the power of one. Only sell one product with one idea to one audience at one time. If you have multiple audiences, you pick which is the primary, you focus on them, and the peripherals will, those who would have a similar interest, will buy the product. So here was a landing page for an ebook called How to Write and Produce Simple Ebooks. I think that was the title. It was an ebook on ebooks. And the headline is the world's easiest and most profitable product to create online. And the idea is simply that, that if you want to do internet marketing, the ebook is for so many reasons is one of the best products that you can create and sell. And this landing page, which you can find at myveryfirstebook.com, myveryfirstebook.com, got a 32% conversion rate, which is really high. And that's the reason, because it's selling the power of one idea. Now, where do you drive the traffic? We talked about driving it to the landing page, but let's say you're using a long copy landing page. When can you drive traffic directly to it? On the left, you see two sources of traffic. An e-newsletter, you have e-newsletter e subscribers, and you put an ad in your e-newsletter, or an email to your house list. If these are the sources, they already know you, and you can send them directly to a long copy landing page. Because, they'll, because they know you, they will, they will read it without resistance. On the other hand, if you're advertising to strangers, and that would be done with banners, pop-ups, SEO, pay-per-click, they don't know much about you. They've only read five or ten words about you. So instead of sending them right away to a long copy landing page, we might send them to what's called a preview page or a squeeze page, which is a, a, a preliminary, a front-end landing page with short copy and maybe a free offer. And we'll take a look at that in a minute uh, so we can uh, capture their email address and and uh, qualify them as interested before we send them to the long copy landing page. So if we take a look at the next size slide, here's an example of a short copy squeeze page. 
this, this was in front of a long copy landing page. But to get to that long copy landing page, you had to go through this page. You had to enter your name and your email address. And there was an incentive to do that. Remember we talked about that conversion formula, and incentive was one of the variables. So here the incentive is enter your email address like we're asking you to, and you get a free CD. So there's high incentive here. And what's the benefit? One, it, again, it, it qual pre-qualifies the reader uh, that they've said, yes, I'm interested. I want to read your long copy landing page. But it also captures the email address. So if someone gets to the long copy landing page, and, and doesn't uh, take advantage of the offer, you've still got an opt-in and built your list. Here's an example of a, uh, of a landing page that is, that is designed to get someone to, to sign up for a free newsletter, a free online newsletter in the investment space for you know, personal finance. And all it asks for is the name and the email address. And that is really all you should ask for. The question comes up all the time. Well, why don't I ask for how many kids are in the household, or whether they uh, are buying a new car this year, or you know whether they rent or own their own home? And the reason is simple: uh, the, the, you really don't need all this data now. You can always get it later. But the more for every new data field you add, you see in the in the right where the arrow is pointing to that yellow. I guess it's yellow or ochre a box, for every field you would add to that, the conversion rate would decline about 10%. So you really want to keep it to a minimum. What kind of response rates can you, can you uh, expect from emails sending uh, traffic to landing pages? Well, if you are uh, sending a free offer, and this is the third bullet from the bottom, if you're sending a free offer like we just looked at, an email offering that newsletter to your house list, you might get anywhere from 6 to 10% conversion rate on, let's say, the uh, email we just looked at. If you're putting a sales offer, meaning you want them to buy something, maybe you're selling a piece of software for $200 or $100 or $299, and you send that to your house list, your conversion rate, I find, will be somewhere between 2 and 6%. So to sum this up, if you have a landing page that hits a general uh, retail market, like business success or investing, it, it, it might not be unusual, or it's not unusual, to get between a, a 1 and a 5% conversion rate. 4 or 5% would be good. If you have a, a more targeted niche, in other words, you have a, uh, a uh, landing page that is appealing to people who are registered representatives or uh, certified financial planners, then uh, 10 to 20 percent is not impossible. I would say more like uh, maybe 5 to 15 percent, but the conversion rates will be much higher. Now, one way to boost up the conversion rate to a landing page is after someone have, uh, has uh, entered their email address, send them an online conversion series. In other words, if you're selling something uh, that for them to that you want them to buy, send them a series of emails extolling the benefits of the product and why they need it. And if you send them five to seven follow-up emails, which can be delivered automatically in a timed sequence via autoresponder software you can convert 10 to 30 percent more of the, of the landing page visitors to customers. The next slide shows a, an, what I thought was a very interesting test. This company tested just the order button, the colors of the order button, on their landing pages. And they, te and they tested what's interesting. If you look at them, you can make an argument why everyone should be the winner. The first is red, white on red. And you look at that and say, well, red is stop, so it stops and gets your attention. But other people have said, no, stop means don't take an action. Stop is bad. So then you can test B, which is green, which means go. Then there's C, which is black text on yellow, and it's bright. It pops out at you. The only one that I'm not crazy about is, is fourth, which is sort of muted. It's navy blue on an ochre background. 
so they tested the same landing page with this being the only variable, nothing else. As remember we talked about in the test, you just test one variable and everything else must be kept the same, including the source of traffic and the date and time the test is conducted. It has to be done at the same time. And what happens is, shown in the next slide, is that red was the control and D, Navy on Ogre, was the winner lifting response uh, conversion rates 27% over the control. And I puzzled over this for a long time until someone in the audience of one of my seminars raised her hand and said, well, I'm in a computer usability expert, and we know that uh, Navy Blue on Ochre is a very uh, high, highly rated in usability. People like that color. So I guess that must be the reason, uh, although you really never know the reason. You just know that it works. So let's take a look at the elements of a typical landing page selling a product. In this case, it's selling an information product a set of uh, CDs, audio CDs, that cost $100 that teach you how to do internet marketing. First, above the top in the banner we talked about is what we call a credibility prehead. It says, Bob Lai, author of 70 books, and the man McGraw-Hill calls America's top copywriter, reveals how you can quit work today with dot, dot, dot. So it instantly builds credibility. And the reason we want to do that up front is people are more skeptical on the web than they are anywhere else, or at least as skeptical. And so you want to immediately disarm their skepticism. And putting the, the, the credibility factor up front does that. In a direct mail package, you could have it on one of the other elements. And when they open the envelope, it's there. But here, people will always start at the top. So you want to have, if you want them to read something, it's got to be at the top. In the banner, there's also three buttons. One that lets them order order now, one that lets them sign up as your affiliate to sell uh, you, this product as an affiliate, and then the third, to sign up for your free newsletter. So if they don't buy your product, at least you capture their email address. And why would we have an order now button all the way there? Because some people will look at a, will glance at a page like this and spend two seconds doing it and say, yeah, I want this. Why make them scroll down into the, into the copy to find your order button? Put one up top. It does. It is proven to increase response. You'll notice also there is. This is a two-column layout. There's a main column in the right with, with the sales copy, but in the left there's a photo of the author, which is me, and a bio. And this is also another way to get credibility up front by instead of waiting till you get pages and pages into the copy and then putting a sidebar. Here you have a sidebar that starts right at top because it's narrow in the left column. You also see that there's a headline, as we talked about, that gets attention. That's the only purpose of it, the Internet Marketing Retirement Plan. There's a subhead that draws you into the copy, quit your job, stay home, and collect 200000 a year. And then there's the, the lead to the copy itself. And the lead usually resonates with some problem or desire or need that the prospect has. When you're, when you're writing copy, the best way to start is focus on them, not on your product. So this one says, dear freedom-seeking friend, are you looking for a way to escape the 9 to 5 rat race? Do you feel chained to your desk at a job you don't like by the reality of having to earn money? The prospects for this product do feel that way. And if you paint, give them a word picture of what they're feeling, they, they look at you and say, yeah, these guys understand me. And I'm going to read further. And let's go to the next slide. So here's the landing page continuing. There's some co copy in the lead, which we looked at, then a subhead, and then the product is presented in, the features of the product are presented in bullets, which is an easy way for someone to scan them online. Also, you'll notice in the left column, my bio has ended, and now we have testimonials. The trick that I use is in the left column on a landing page, I will put as many testimonials as the client or I have, even if they, even if they're many feet long and go, and go to the ends of the landing page, the the number. That, do I think that someone's going to read them all? No, 
I think they'll be skimmed and scammed. I don't think scanned. I don't think someone will read them all. But just the sheer weight of them help convince the reader that you're a credible uh, source or authoritative source for this service or product or information. Let's go to the next. Again, some uh, on the sidebar again. After uh, the bio, we we'll hear some testimonials for credibility. Another thing that I like to do is what's called a content sidebar. You see on the right, it says three easy steps to generating a six-figure online income. And we actually tell in that sidebar, you cut off so you can't read the whole thing, we actually give the steps. We don't tease them. We tell you here are the steps. Obviously, we don't go into great detail, but we tell you what the steps are. That way, I can say in my email or my Google ad, click here, find out the three steps to making money online free. Because you actually get the information by reading the landing page, even if you don't order the product. So that's a, a little trick I use. Everybody talks about today selling with content. And here's an example of that in action. Next page, please. I close with a guarantee, use it risk-free for 90 days. And then I have another technique, which you see in another sidebar there, that says scope extender, or extend scope. This is aimed at people who want to get rich using internet marketing, which is a very popular uh, pr uh, topic right now in the internet space. But not everybody who's reading this actually needs money. Some of them might say, hey, I'm already a, a multimillionaire. I don't need this. But the, the extent, scope extender says, hey, even if you're a multimillionaire, you might still want to do this, and explains why. So it, it lets you capture people who are not your primary market. I like to put, you should always have a bonus when you're, when you're selling something online, a bonus product, a bonus report, some kind of extra. A uh, bonus free webinar, and I like to put the bonus in the PS. You could certainly put it in a sidebar, but I, I like to put it at the end because people read the PS. So here it says, order the internet PS, order the internet marketing retirement plan today, and get a free copy of my special report, online marketing that works. And I assign a price to it, list price, twenty nine dollars, so it creates a higher perceived value. Next slide. Here was another test, and I won't read these headlines to you because you can see them. But there were six. That this is, goes back to that uh, landing page we looked at, giving away that free DVD, where the winning image was the smart woman, not the picture of the DVD. And here were six headlines that were tested, split test in a multivariate test, on that page. And you look at them, and you see all of them are good headlines, and all of them you can make a reason or an argument why they should win. Number five, starting 8 2005 get paid what you're worth. The date is real specific that gets attention. Then you get the one, why watching this DVD could be worth an extra $10,000 per year. There's a tangible benefit, but also it describes an action, watching this DVD. So you can make an argument why each of these is a good headline. But as we see on the next slide, the winner was why watching this DVD could be worth an extra ten thousand dollars per year. Now, can you predict in advance which of these six would be the winner? You know, you can write these good headlines, but no, you don't know which will be the winner. Fortunately, with landing pages and uh, testing software, it's easy enough to test it, and, and instead of guessing at it, to actually find out which works best. Here again, we have the credit. The credibility prehead. This is what I call a uh, a familiarity lead. Sell here we're selling a a kit of business forms for people like me. I'm a freelance copywriter, so one of my markets is copywriters, which is a growing market, and I sell a, a kit of business forms for copywriters. So I wanted to. Copywriters typically don't use a lot of business forms, so I wanted to. Help, help them understand why forms are useful. So my lead says almost all small businesses use a variety of forms, letters, boilerplate documents, and checklists to manage their marketing sales, accounts payable, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
For many businesses, such as the rental property owners, you can buy forms customized for that industry. So I'm introducing the idea of that, why not buy forms customized for your industry, which is freelance copywriting. And this worked pretty well. We got to my house file, people who have opted into my list, we got an 11% conversion rate. I think this was a, uh, an $80 or a $60 product. I can't remember exactly what the, the price was in that range. Let's go to the next, uh, next slide. Okay. Hey, Bob, just a real quick clarification, uh, yeah. if you could add this for us. Uh, we're getting one questions come up a couple times. So a lot of the examples here, m m many or most of the examples are for soft products, you know, virtual products, software products, et cetera. Uh, how does this translate? Does it translate pretty much a lot equally for, you know, uh, more complicated products or for, for physical products? As well? uh, let me forge ahead, because toward the end of the presentation, I have examples that are for physical products and more complicated products. Okay, super. Go ahead. So let's go back to the slide we have. This is a, um, this again is, a, sorry guys, this is again a, a soft product. And uh, the, the, the example here is that news works in landing pages. Reclusive European billionaire takes advantage of rising oil prices and helps investors turn 10000 into 189000 in just 36 months. So whenever you can work news into your landing page, it will increase the response. Next slide. You should also have, uh, this, is, this is just a, a sort of a, a, a sort of a, a trick. Uh, the headline for this was, this was for a book uh, by Gordon Grossman, who was the uh, direct uh, marketing consultant who invented the sweepstakes and the penny nailing for Reader's Digest. And he, he wrote a book on direct marketing. And the gimmick here was that he was revealing secrets that the writer of the letter, uh, Marty Edelston, the owner of Boardroom, had paid him a lot of money to use for Marty's company. And so the headline was Good Grief, Gordon Grossman. And, and it was just the alliteration is an attention-getting idea. So I wouldn't force alliteration into my headline. But if you have the opportunity to use it, for whatever psychological reason, it's an attention-getter and, and it stops people. So alliteration can work. Next. Oops, one sec. Oh, I got the link. There we go. Another uh, thing that works well in landing pages in general and in direct response copy in particular is the big idea, the you know a new idea that the reader hasn't heard of. So if this says the secret currency of the ultra wealthy can make you up to 27 times richer than investing in the S&P 500, and I think I don't remember but I think the secret currency was a type of bond. But if we had, bonds are boring, and if we had said this type of bond makes what rich people 27 times richer, people would not have been as, as interested. But so by phrasing it like the secret currency, you want to find out what the secret is, what the currency is. Next slide. Here's a technique called the drop in the bucket technique. The idea of this copy is to make it seem like the material you get is a drop in the bucket compared to the value, uh, the cost of the material is a drop in the bucket con uh, compared to the value or compared to what you actually receive. And you'll see this in the Ron Popeil commercials where you'll pay uh, 19 or $20 for a slicer. Or, and if you order now, you get a free turkey knife and a free uh, baster and a free oven rack, and it keeps going on, and a free uh, uh, chicken thermometer. So it goes on and on and on until, uh, the, you know, the value seems so high when they, you know, when they ask for the price at the end, it seems like nothing. So that's a, a good way to close a landing page where you're actually selling a product instead of generating a lead, which will be, use that uh, drop in the bucket technique. And you can read this slide and see how it was done here at your leisure. Next slide. Question and answer format can work. Question headlines work. Who else wants to be a $250,000 a year marketing consultant? Who else is a formula? And formulas work, so I wouldn't be afraid of it. Next slide. You could see, just to show you, I picked this off the internet, that you know this is not original. Here's another person using the who else formula. Who else is interested in selling more by doing less while earning more money. So again, don't be afraid to, to use something you've heard before 
you know, it, it's a very effective marketing uh, technique is to take ideas you've seen in one industry or one product and apply them to the other. So don't be afraid to or hesitant to creatively borrow. Next slide. Here's an idea. We, we talked about this a little bit, but it's another content side, sidebar where there's a, on the landing page here, there's an article on viral marketing. The product's about viral marketing, and there's an article that gives away a viral marketing technique. So again, you read the, you read the landing page, and you get something for free even if you don't buy the product, which is very powerful. That's what we call a freemium. Next slide. You, um, here is an email that drove traffic to that landing page, uh, and it got a 3% conversion rate there. And you could see that what they were selling was not the product, but the uh, free viral marketing tip. Next slide. This isn't a physical product, but we, it was sold like a physical product, uh, sort of that uh, drop in the bucket technique. Uh, when you have something that's very expensive, you want to show all the elements of the product so that it looks like a lot. You know, if you're selling a filtration system, you want to take it apart and show the filter and the valve and the cover and the, uh, you know, the wrench that comes with it. You want to show the components of your product if it's, a, if it's an expensive product so that the person sees that they're getting a lot for their money. You know, if I was selling a, a, a barbecue grill, you know, I would show the, uh, the tools that came with it, um, the tank of propane, things like that. So again, it's what people call the Gintu chicken knife uh, technique, where on those old commercials by Alvin Eichoff, they would you know sell knives and they you know they would keep bringing out knives and you get this knife and that knife. It's sort of like the way Cutco operates today, and when you you know when they're done, you feel you're getting so much uh, that it's worth the whatever price they ask. So that's another technique, you know, showing the product. People, when you make statements and copy, you have to back them up with proof. And visuals work very well on the, on the computer. Uh, there's no four color printing if the, if the, if the screen is color. So it's, it's easy to get eye-catching visual. Now here was uh, from, a, from a financial pr uh, promotion where the, uh, the marketer claimed that inflation, interest rates, and gold moved together. And when I read that, I said, who says that? I never heard that in my life. But then they included this chart, and you could look at it and say, oh, yeah, they do. So graphics, you know, one picture can be worth a 1,000 words. So use graphics, photos, graphs, charts to support the points you make in your copy. Next technique is problem solution. You want to tell them uh, what the problem is that they have, in this case that they want to, they want to be richer and make more money and then offer your product as a solution. Let's go to the next slide. This is, again, uh, what we talked about earlier with the chart. One picture is worth a 1,000 words, but costs nothing. Here's a, uh, a landing page on health, on uh, cardiac health. And this was uh, taken from some newsletter that the client published and adds a lot of credibility to show this kind of uh, picture, although certainly it's not original. We talked about in the banner building credibility. This is a promotion from uh, the University of California at Berkeley. And so if you're coming from a college, uh, why not use the college seal? It, it's a real, uh, you know, it can be a real uh, credibility builder. And uh, people are comfortable if, if it's from Johns Hopkins or Harvard, it must be good. Here's another example of a free on free squeeze page where you fill in your first name, your last name, and your email address, and you get free on free means you want to give away, let's say, a free newsletter. To get them to do that, you give them something else free. So it's a double free offer. And that will greatly increase the response rates on pages where you're giving away free content. To have a bonus, a gift, that they get also free just for taking the, the free content. So if, you, if it was you giving away a free white paper, you might also give away a free webinar. Here it says, you know, subscribe now to their newsletter, and you get a five-part e-course on 10 pack strategies to increase your website's results. 
Next slide. Here's one that uh, we had come up at a seminar, and it seemed very sensible. You've got to comply with your duty of care obligation. But the problem is uh, we don't know who this guy is. We don't know who his organization is. We don't know what they stand for. So it lacks credibility. And you remember all those credibility techniques we looked at earlier, having the person's bio, testimonial, affiliations. None of that's here, so it's a weak page. Here's the next one shows uh, a landing page for a uh, someone selling market. I'm sorry, someone selling magic tricks and instructions for those tricks. And what's missing is again credibility. We don't know, you know, is this the amazing Preskin? Who is this person? You know, if he's a successful amateur magician, we would want to know that. Here's a really nice landing page for a an interesting physical product where it is a flood vent. In other words, you would put it in a sewer or a water system, and it would control the flow of water. So here we see flood solutions, the logo type, which adds credibility, a picture of the product so you get a great idea of what it does. It's not exactly in a real application, it's sort of superimposed, but it does at least show an application. Here's a, a, a raging canal, or a, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it's obviously a water conduit of some sort. It notes uh, with further credibility that it's FEMA, compliant. We all know about FEMA following Hurricane Katrina. Everybody knows what FEMA is. And that they are engineered flood vents. And then it gives the technical detail. Certified, engi certified engineered openings. Each vent covers and it tells the space and how much you pay for that coverage. So it's very specific because it's trying to sell these products. And the, the landing page here gives you two choices. It lets you buy it online, where the button says shop online, or it lets you find out more about the product if what's on the landing page, the copy here, is not sufficient. And this was a very successful uh, landing page for this company. Next. Here's another one that was successful for a physical product. These are uh, a, sort of a modern type, uh, or a modern design, rather, of desk. and they have this very odd, intriguing headline, Hemingway's Virtual Desk Finally Located. And even though I have mixed feelings about that, I don't really know what a virtual desk is. Uh, the whole thing about the idea of Hemingway's desk finally located is intriguing. You want to know what happened. And then the copy underneath tells you, why did Ernest Hemingway put the pen away after seven months? The great American writer officially authored seven literary, uh, seven novels rather, seven literary masterpieces. And it goes on to explain uh, the relationship between Hemingway and his desk and the desk that they're offering. But here's another landing page for a physical product. And you can see that you say, order your life, your life desk today, free shipping. There's a button on the right for placing your order. So this also was a successful landing page for a physical product. Next slide. So what rules are there for writing landing pages that sell? Number one, build credibility early, right up front. Remember that grading system? It had the FEMA approved right up front. Because uh, unlike uh, other material, like say a print ad, where you open the page in the magazine, you see everything at a glance. On the internet, you only see the beginning of the copy on your first screen. So you need to get that credibility early up front. Number two. Do what you can to capture the email addresses of non-buyers. If you're trying to sell something, what happens if somebody doesn't buy it? Well, you'd at least like to capture their email address because they're a prospect if they're not a customer. And with a conversion series, if you capture the email address with an online conversion series, a series of five to seven or more emails sent at a time scheduled via autoresponder, you can convert 10 to 30% of those non-buyers to buyers. Number three, use lots of testimonials. They help overcome online skepticism. Number four, use lots of bullets. If you're using long copy, or even short copy, but if you're using long copy in your landing page, bullets make it easier to read and make the point pops out. The points pop out better. Also, if you have a product and you have a lot of bullets, it looks like the customer, the prospect, is getting a lot of stuff for her money. Number five, arouse curiosity in the headline. 
who else wants to be a core of a million dollar a year consultant. Put an emotional hook in the lead. Remember that uh, internet marketing uh, program promotion. You, uh, the, excuse me, that internet marketing uh, promotion where it said, "Hey, you, uh, you're sitting at your desk. You don't really like your job. You know, it was an emotional hook." Make it timely and current. The more you can bring in current events and feature them on a landing page, the better. I've seen landing pages with a with a clock literally ticking down to an offer deadline. That also makes it timely. Solve the reader's problem, state what their problem is, and, and tell and show how the product will take care of that problem. Always offer free bonuses with a physical product. The bonuses may be physical with an information product that might be uh, uh, information premiums. And stress the money back guarantee. For uh, information products, for example, you know, like magazine subscriptions and newsletters, we normally say uh, try it for 30 days, and if not uh, not satisfied, let us know. Keep the issues you got, and uh, we'll refund all your money. Or if it's a soft offer, you don't pay us. So let me go to the next slide. I want to thank your for your thank you, folks, for your attention. Uh, you can ask us anything you want for more detail. We'll answer that, and you'll get it next week in a white paper. So Craig, let me turn it over to you. Excellent. Thank you again for joining us, Bob, and for that uh, for the information-packed uh, presentation. Again, we do appreciate it, and with that, we're going to sign off. Thanks again. Please join us in the future, and please do remember to share the information. We really would appreciate you passing it along. Have a great day. Thanks.